My romantic cabin getaway with my fiancé isn't exactly going as planned. By the cold people. Make sure you go check out his Facebook link at facebook.com forward slash Felix Blackwell Books. That'll be linked in the description as well. My fiancé and I are from California, but her family lives in Colorado, and they own a cabin near Pikes Peak way up in the mountains. After visiting them, they recommended that we go stay in the cabin a few days. We are avid hikers and jumped at the opportunity. Colorado is very rich in Native American folk legend. Virtually every place you go to used to belong to an indigenous community, and a few of them who remain keep their traditions and stories alive. Pikes Peak is no different. There are enough stories, and gift shops, to give anyone a sense that the land itself is alive. I don't know if this has anything to do with what's happening, but maybe someone here is from Colorado and can help connect the dots. Faye and I are currently at the cabin. It's day four and we're planning on leaving today, but things have gotten very strange around here and it looks like we're going to be here a while longer. We have enough food for the winter and the heater is in stellar order, but the Wi-Fi is just terrible at best and there's virtually no cell phone reception out here. We feel isolated. I'll try to respond to the comments, but the internet dips out for hours at a time up here. The first weird thing that happened was the snow. There was no snow in the forecast, so we packed light, but on our first night here, just our luck, a blizzard pounded the whole area. My little Corolla is basically just a brick of ice outside. There's no way I'm going to make it the six mile drive down the mountain to town. I should just blame myself for trusting Colorado in spring. After a day, Thursday, of lovely hiking and sightseeing, some really unsettling stuff started happening. When we returned to the cabin just before dusk, we found an enormous dreamcatcher dangling from a tree about a dozen yards from the back door. This wasn't the kind that you're imagining, the kind you buy from a novelty shop. This thing was made from twigs and twine, and it was about three feet in diameter absolutely humongous. Neither Faye nor I were stupid enough to touch it. We're veteran horror movie fans and we know that's how you get cursed. If the snow melts a bit, I'll get back out there and snap a picture and post it here. That night, while we were eating dinner, we heard a bunch of noises in the woods outside. Twigs, crunching, leaves rustling, etc. This wasn't unusual because we saw elk and deer on our hike, but the sounds were slow and purposeful. They stopped and started and they were rhythmic, like someone was casing the area in a crescent shape around the cabin. I used my really bright tactical flashlight and look outside off the porch, but there was nothing. We stayed in all day on Friday, just cuddled, hung out, played some of the board games that we brought, and some of the Super Nintendo games they had in the cabin. Donkey Kong Country 2, I have considered stealing because it's the greatest game ever made. It snowed again, and after dark, we started hearing more noises. Around 1 a.m., Faye woke me up. She told me that she was hearing voices outside. I strained to listen, and I thought I could make out the sound of a man crying very far away. But his voice was drowned out by the wind, so I wasn't absolutely sure of what I heard. So we went back to sleep again. But, around 4.45 a.m., we heard him distinctly and closer. It sounded like he was calling for help, but he would dip into another language that I've never heard before. We called the ranger station at the bottom of the hill using my cell phone, and they told us that they would get up there to check it out. We never saw him, and I doubt they ever came. On Saturday, shit got real scary. It snowed again in the morning, and I stopped getting service for most of the day. Faye and I watched movies and tried to Skype with her family, but that didn't work. She went to sleep pretty early, around 8, while I did some photo editing on my laptop in the living room. She woke up crying hysterically. When I asked her what was wrong, she said she had a dream that she was lost in the woods outside, and that something was following her. I cuddled her until she fell back asleep, and eventually, I drifted off too. 
Faye woke me up around 1 a.m. She was absolutely beside herself. I've never seen her so afraid in my life, and just the look on her face is what really unsettled me. She told me that she heard the man outside, but this time she recognized the voice. She was absolutely convinced it was her grandfather's voice, and he was wandering around outside begging for help. Faye's grandpa died when we were seniors in college four years ago. I told her that she was dreaming, but then I heard the voice too. I never met the guy, so I wouldn't recognize his voice, but it was different from the night before. It sounded older. I had to do everything I could to keep her from running off into the woods and looking for him. Eventually, she realized that the possibility of it being him was absurd, so we put a movie on at a good volume and fell back asleep. My cell phone wouldn't connect a single call. What happened last night, Sunday, was the thing that really sent me over the edge. Essentially, the same thing happened around 1am, at which point I was still awake, almost expecting the noise to happen. I heard a voice, this time it was a woman's. Thankfully, it was distant enough not to wake Faye. I walked into the bedroom and cracked the window just a tiny bit. The frosty air that came through the cracks seemed like a death sentence to me. As a Californian, nobody could survive outside for that long. Not without serious, military-grade winter gear. And yet, someone was wandering the fuck around out there, stepping on twigs and crying. I am a reasonable, skeptical, sometimes arrogant agnost. But I'm telling you, the voice sounded exactly like my mother's. My mom is alive and well and living in Southern California, so my brain instantly cramped at the sound of her voice out here in the Rocky Mountains. I would know my mother's voice anywhere. I think we all would. And I'm telling you, I'm about 90% sure it was hers, which is way, way too sure not to scare the shit out of me. I grabbed my light and went outside with a blanket wrapped around me and my hiking boots. I circled the entire cabin and looked around. There was snow pushed out of the way in a big, meandering pattern that snaked in and out of the tree line, like someone was drunkenly shuffling around. Maybe they were injured. The path went right up to the bathroom window, then back into the woods. Each time the voice called out, I shouted, Mom, or Who's there? Or, who are you? Each time, the voice receded further into the woods. I'm pretty certain that it was trying to coax me deeper and deeper into the forest, away from the cabin. I'm still alive because I'm not an idiot. I'm not gonna die like some dumbass in a bad horror movie. So, I went back inside and made sure we were locked down tight. Since I can't call the ranger station, I'm posting this instead. I'll keep you updated. Edit. It's Monday, and we got a hold of Faye's dad. The weather is supposed to clear up tomorrow, so he's going to come pick us up in his truck and help me get my car down the mountain. I'll keep you all informed. Only one more night in this place. I'll try to get some photos up. Edit. 9.30pm Monday. I've been able to get online twice today, and I wish I knew more about electronics, but I'm a history teacher. So, I don't think I can fix the Wi-Fi or predict when it'll work. I can send and receive emails and some Reddit posts, but I can't load some websites or view photos. Faye hasn't been feeling well since noon. She's developed a stomach ache and has been intermittently throwing up. We both ate the same thing and I feel fine, so I'm not sure what it is. She sometimes gets like this when she gets worked up. Although I am an agnost atheist, she is very Catholic and she's convinced something supernatural is going on. No need for alarm at the moment. She doesn't have a fever, and I'm keeping her hydrated and in high spirits. She seems to be on the mend, and she went to sleep about an hour and a half ago. I do have some noises to report, though. Crackling and repetitive vocalizations in the forest. Probably a hundred yards out. The tree line starts about twenty yards out, so the sound is coming from much deeper. Some movement spotted just behind the tree line at dusk, but could be elk or deer, etc. Couldn't see very much, keeping all the curtains closed and windows locked and furniture in front of the front and back door, and I'm checking on Faye every half hour. Her dad will be here late morning to pick us up and dig my car out. 
Also, a redditor near us pointed out that I'm an idiot for not double-checking the weather. You're correct. I promise I'll provide a new post tomorrow, should anything significant happen. Sorry for the delay, everyone. We're collecting ourselves. Sorry for the formatting issues. I'm writing this on my phone. Faye's dad picked us up in his truck and he brought his buddy with him, who's now following us in my car. A lot of things happened last night. Some things I won't share because I'm not sure how to interpret them yet. I'm not even sure I understand what happened. But here are the most important things. I also managed to get some recordings, which I'll try to upload when I get home to California in a few days. I tried to stay awake last night until 1am because over the past few nights, that's the approximate time the noises change from rustling and branches to cracking to voices. I didn't make it. I fell asleep on the couch with my laptop open, waiting for the Wi-Fi to come back. I think that was at about 12.30 a.m. I woke up right around 1.15 to a muffled voice. In my sleepy days, I tried to figure out where it was coming from. I thought it was just outside the living room window, so I sat there quietly trying to make the words out. It was a woman's voice, saying things like, A few days. It's not mine. I'm not alone. Okay. I got up and peeked out the curtain, but didn't see anyone. But then the voice said, It's my parents' house. And I knew the voice was Faye's. As I mentioned earlier, my fiancé has an undiagnosed sleep disorder, and has extensive sleep talking and sometimes sleepwalks. She's had pronounced night terror since she was a little kid. I'll post a story on that someday. I walked into the bedroom to find Faye, sleeping on her tummy as usual. She didn't say anything else as I came in. Two things really disturbed me about this situation, though. The first is that she appeared to be having a conversation with someone, which is actually quite common for her, but the person she was having a conversation with was interrogating her, asking her questions about herself, me, the cabin. Second, in her sleep, Faye was imitating another voice. It wasn't hers that she was speaking with, she was altering the pitch and tone to sound like a different person. My modus operandi is to not wake her up when she has sleep disturbances. There's a story behind this. Expect that one someday, too. Instead, I gently rub her back in her hair, which calms her and puts her back into a restful sleep. I did this for a few minutes, but there was another noise, off in the distance outside. I got up and I walked to the window and listened, and I think this was the first time I really felt scared, that I felt like we were in real danger. It was a child singing in the dark. I couldn't really make out much of what they were saying, but I am certain it was a child, probably aged six to eight, trying to sing a song. The snow had abated for a while now, and the stars were notably bright, so I could see all the way to the rim of the forest, about 20-ish yards out. There was a figure standing there, past the first trees facing back to me, looking up at either the moon or the tops of the trees. It stood so still that I convinced myself it was a tree stump or something. In a few minutes, it was no longer visible. My skeptical nature compels me to be reasonable and say that my eyes were playing tricks on me. When I turned around, Faye was sitting straight up in bed, eyes closed. She does this a lot in her sleep. She craned her neck and said something like, don't let them in, or don't let them inside. She was still doing the weird voice, so I woke her up. Faye and I sat in the bedroom with the lights on, talking about what we should do. I tried to get online to send an email to her parents, but of course, it doesn't work when you need it. We agreed to stay in the same room and try to fall back asleep. At one point, I got up to get her some water. She hasn't vomited in several hours and was feeling a lot better and out the kitchen window, I saw flashes of pale light. They weren't like flashes you'd see when someone walks through the woods with a flashlight. They were more like if someone had a lantern, they could turn on and off slowly. I flicked on the porch light to the front and the side of the house, hoping that it would discourage anyone from trying to approach. But as I walked back to the bedroom, I saw the distinct outline of a person through the window curtain in the living room. They were pressed against the glass with their hands on it, trying to peer inside. Since it was dark in the living room and brightish outside, I could clearly see their silhouette. I shouted and approached the window, but 
The person ran off before I could pull the curtain open. Faye slept soundly, but I continued to hear voices outside. Different ones, on and off all night until dawn. I wrote several of them down, but I couldn't sleep, so I camped out in the living room. I kept the bedroom door open so I could hear Faye if she started talking again. The voices would go away for hours and then just start back up again. At one point, I fell asleep, but I was woken up again by the sound of a light switching on and off again. From the couch, I could see the light from outside, going on and off in patterns of five. I can't explain why this disturbed me so much, but it did. I imagined some kind of horrible creature standing in my house somewhere, flipping the switch up and down and smiling. My first instinct was to check on Faye and I nearly had a heart attack when I saw she wasn't in bed. I started calling her name, pacing around the house, looking out the windows to see if she was outside. When I looked out the kitchen window, there she was, sitting on the hood of my car about 30 feet into the driveway. Her back was to me, she was staring off into the forest. She was completely rigid just the way she sits up in bed when she's asleep. Faye slept walk all over the house back home in California. I found her in the kitchen and in the downstairs hallway and in the living room, but she's never gone outside. I shouted her name from the kitchen, but the second I did, Faye jumped off my car and dashed into the woods at full sprint. She never even looked back at me. I started flipping out. I screamed her name over and over and I grabbed my boots to go after her. But the second I pulled the front door open, Faye called out my name from behind. She was standing in the hall looking confused, asking me what's wrong. Apparently, she had been in the bathroom, and in my masculine crusade, I had forgotten to check there. I looked at my car and out into the forest, and honestly, the first thing that came to my mind was, you clever motherfucker. Needless to say, we stayed up the remaining few hours until dawn intermittently writing down the voices we heard, which faded away and became less frequent with the passage of time. I'll try to get the recordings up in a few days. For now, here's a list of the voices we heard. We recalled some of the voices from the previous nights for memory, but I figured you'd like to know what was being said throughout the duration of this lovely cabin experience. I will return to Colorado, but fuck Pike's Peak. The question marks indicate words that were pretty unclear. A man's voice, vaguely familiar, but I couldn't put a face to it. This has been over the past several nights. Hello? Oh, God, look at it, look! Hello? Dumb, dumb, they see in the dark. I'm lost, I am lost. Watch you, watch you, whoa my, whoa my. It's very dark, I can see those lights. I'll come down there. Don't smile. Don't smile. I see you. Could have maybe been goat smile? A woman's voice sounded age 20-ish last night, gasping in horror, surprise over and over. Lay it on the ground and burn it. Turn it. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Completely monotone, not melodic at all. She talks in her sleep. She's talking to me now. A child sounded about six to eight years old, indeterminate sex, last night. Crying and whining, occasional laughter. Oh, so me I do. Why do I do? Eat, eat, eat. I am a vacant, naked. So, Miyadu. Singing, not sure if it was actually English or if my mind was just forcing the sounds into English. When do we go inside? When do we go inside? This one had a very unusual imitation. Sounded like a robot trying to mimic a child. The voice of my mother, a few nights ago. Stop. Stop laughing and joking. I recognized the Bostonian accent. Look at the windows. Did you see it? The voice of Faye's grandfather, a few nights ago. Lots of indiscernible groaning and calls for help. Something about the war. The bodies are still on the ground. They never found it, but they're there. Right here. Right here. Oh, they found it. 
They found it. Ah, I'm standing in the same place 20 years. By the way, I forgot to check to see if the Dreamcatcher was still out back. You're welcome to drive out there and look for yourself, though. So, that night, we sat down with Faye's mom, Laura, in her bedroom while her dad was watching the news downstairs. Her mom was upset by the stories we told her. I mean, she was visibly disturbed to the point of being in tears. She kept apologizing to Faye and hugging her. Laura told us that they purchased a cabin from their good friend, Jennifer, I think, who moved to Nevada about 20 years ago, and that Jennifer had her husband had complained about all sorts of weird experiences while living there. Her husband, Tom, like myself, was fond of hiking and exploring the woods, and collected tons of arrowheads and other neat trinkets he'd find out on the travels around Pikes Peak. But Jennifer started having dreams about Tom being dragged off into the woods from their bedroom. She had all kinds of horrific nightmares about him being skinned and pinned to the trees like some sort of macabre artwork. Jennifer said that while Tom was at work, she would occasionally hear the voice of her daughter, who died in childhood of some kind of bone cancer, calling mommy from the edge of the forest. Jennifer's doctor claimed it was a medication she was on, and changed her meds. Tom got a new job in Vegas and they basically noped out of there. On a lighter note, Tom hung himself in the garage two years after they moved. No note or anything. Anyway, Laura, Faye's mom, and Greg, Faye's dad, only used the cabin to get away in the summer. Laura never experienced anything beyond weird feelings while she was there. She choked up at all the crazy stories Jennifer had told her. Greg, however, who suffers from PTSD nightmares occasionally, experienced exacerbated sleep disturbances in the cabin. Over the years, he became reluctant to go up there, and he claimed all the things he'd seen in Vietnam came back to him when he slept there. Allegedly, some of the people he saw get killed would come back and talk to him in his dreams at the cabin. The last time he stayed there, he woke up in a dream to find a few of them sitting in the bedroom with him, maimed and rotted. He privately mentioned to Laura that he also heard their voices in the forest, crying, begging, screaming for their mothers, etc. Oh, and guess what time he always heard them. Laura told us she honestly didn't believe that there was anything wrong with the cabin. Faye was extremely pissed off and let her have it. They kind of ended our visit on a bad note. Later that night, I was up reading and Faye was sleeping next to me. She always falls asleep before me. That girl could fall asleep on a pile of rocks. She started mumbling in her sleep, so I listened carefully. And here are a few things I heard her say. Never. Never ever. No, I wouldn't. On the mountain. I can't. Why his name? We don't know you. No, it's Felix. That's my name. About two hours later, she woke me up by nudging me in her sleep, saying, Tell the man in the hallway to leave. This sent me over the edge, so I got to go to the bathroom to get some water. I didn't find anything strange, but I had a very hard time falling asleep, though. This morning, we heard back from the guy who went up to the cabin to check for gas leaks or carbon monoxide, at the behest of a few scrupulous Redditors. The guy mentioned that radon is a big problem in some of these old places in the mountains. He's some kind of super badass handyman with all kinds of equipment. So he wrangled up one of the peak rangers and they went up to the place together. Apparently, there were tracks all around the house, dozens of pairs of them. Like a large group of people had been wandering around looking in the windows. All of the windows and doors had been sealed the way we left them. When they got inside, some stuff was moved around. The silverware drawer was emptied onto the kitchen floor and turned upside down. The power was completely dead. But the weirdest thing was that there was water all over the bed and floor, but... But our guy checked for leaks in the ceiling and the bathroom pipes. Nothing. Nothing had been stolen from the house, not even food. Some of the old clothes in the closet were strewn on the ground, but nothing stolen. Like maybe someone was trying them on, or smelling them. The ranger said that there were legends about the mountain, something about things that sort of act like people, but they came out of an old abandoned mine. Greg's friend couldn't remember the name the ranger gave them. It was in a native language. 
I asked Greg about the ranger, about the sounds I heard. Specifically, the Wachu Wachu Womai Womai. And he said that it's a widely recognizable chant, but he doesn't know what it means. Anyone here have an idea? No radon, no carbon monoxide, and no gas. The place is all electric. He checked for mold, but said it was unlikely that there would be any all the way up there. He did say it's possible that it's some kind of electrical problem, and that this can sometimes make people feel very unsettled, and maybe even have hallucinations. He has some kind of Geiger counter or gadget that detects issues like this, but it was broken when he tried to use it. I'm going to keep a close eye on Faye. She's still shaken up about all this. If there's anything left to report, I'll let you know. Hi everyone, just wanted to make a quick update. As promised, because Faye and I are flying back to California shortly. Faye is back to normal and feeling great. I watched her eat a huge plate of chicken parmesan yesterday. The first thing I should mention is that Faye's father was very reluctant to talk about the cabin or the weird experiences he's had there. He keeps trying to change the subject, and generally, he's in a bad mood. Which is pretty normal for him. He's a grumpy, grubbly old Vietnam veteran, and was in the army since he's young. His personality is exactly what you'd imagine it to be. Faye asked him bluntly, Is there something wrong with the cabin? Why would you let us go up there in the first place? His response was just, Talk to your mother. Update. We've begun hearing voices outside of our home. Faye is really upset and feels that I might have exacerbated these strange circumstances by giving them widespread exposure online. I'm going to go dark for a few days and see if that helps. Don't worry about us. We have a few close friends looking out for us. They know the entire story too.